Hi everybody, I'm Dawn. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for visiting with me today. So today I'm going to do a video essay, <coughs> pardon me, on the Von Erich family. Now, recently a movie, several months ago, not very recently, but recently enough, a movie called The Iron Claw came out starring Zac Efron. Oh, I love, I love Zac Efron. But anyway, that movie came out and um, I haven't actually seen it yet just because I know it's going to be a tearjerker and I can't, I just can't, especially right now um, with all that's going on in my life. But uh, he, um, or Zac Efron plays Kevin Von Erich um, and or Kevin Atkinson. And um, I don't know, it's just in, in the clips and everything I've watched, he's done an awesome job. And even though it's like TikToks and things I've seen, make me want to cry. So, you know, the movie is just going to do me in. And so I wanted to do this video essay on them. And I'm not really a wrestling fan now, but I was a big one for a long time. And my dad, um, he was a huge wrestling fan. He watched Fritz and the Fritz, their father, Fritz von Erich in the fifties and sixties. And, um, you know, and I watched wrestling with my dad in the 70s and 80s. So, you know, I, you know, he, he, he liked them and he loved wrestling and he really liked this family. And so I thought, you know, with the Iron Claw coming out and everything, now would be a good time to talk about the Von Erich family. Um, now, I am not going to really discuss their wrestling accolades so much as just kind of talk about them, each of them a little bit. So, and I am going to be referring to my notes. I do have a lot of them. So just bear with me if you don't like me looking down to read my notes. I'll try to put them up high. But So the Von Erich family is an American professional wrestling family. Um, you know, a uh, pretty famous wrestling family, probably in my opinion, the most famous one, the second famous, probably being the Hart, you know, Brett and Owen Hart and their dads do Hart. Um, but uh, their actual family name is Atkinson, um, but they all professionally went by Von Erich in keeping with the family's patriarch, Jack Atkinson, whose wrestling name was Fritz Von Erich, who was this villain. He was like this horrible Nazi character. Um, but even though the Von Erichs didn't follow, you know, the same bad guy trend, they still wanted to take that name just in keeping with the father's, uh, you know, moniker. And for the purposes of this video, I will refer to them as the Von Erichs, but their name is Atkinson. Their legal name is Atkinson. Um, so Frit Fritz Von Erich, born Jack Barton Atkinson. Um, his birthday is August 16th, 1929. And he was born in, in Jewett, Texas. He was originally trained by Stu Hart who I just brought up, who is the, who was originally, oh, <laughs> who is the father of Brett and Owen Hart. And Stu Hart also trained big wrestling names, Chris Jericho, Edge, Mark Henry, Superstar Billy Graham, and many more. Um, and Fritz would become a top star in the National Wrestling Alliance, NWA, and in World Class Championship Wrestling, WCCW. Uh, Fritz also served as the NWA president for a short time in the 70s and also the president of WCCW when it moved to Dallas, Texas. In Japan, Fritz was known as Tetsu no Sumi. Tetsu no Sumi. I remember my dad told me that when I was little. My dad, you know, my dad's from Japan. Um, but that means the Iron Claw, hence the name of the movie. And Fritz married Doris on June 23rd, 1950, and had six sons. He unfortunately died of lung cancer on September 10th, 1997 in his Denton County, Texas home at the age of 68. Fritz and Doris had their first son, Jack Jr. on September 21st, 1952. There's not a lot about Jack. This is where it starts getting kind of sad. Um, Jack passed away at the age of six in Niagara Falls, New York on March 7th, 1959. The family had lived in a, a, like a camper trailer and they would travel in it. And so Jack 
um, he was electrocuted when he stepped on a trailer tongue and then he fell into a puddle of melted snow, like face down and he drowned. It's just horrific. That's so horrific. Just so sad. Um, and Kevin is, was his next born son. He was born on May 15, 1957 in Belleville, Illinois. In the ring, he was called the Golden Warrior and he went to North Texas State University where he played football, but an injury ended his football career. He started wrestling as Kevin Von Erich in 1976 for WCCW. That was the World Class Championship Wrestling. I'll refer to it as WCCW. Um, or I'll refer to it in whole, but usually I'll refer to it as WCCW. He was one of the promotion's biggest stars and was known for wrestling barefoot. He said in an interview that he never intended to wrestle barefoot, but before one of his matches, someone hit his boots as a prank and he couldn't find them before his match. So he went to the ring barefoot and it just kind of stuck. And he wasn't the only wrestler that wrestled barefoot. Superfly Jimmy Snuka also wrestled barefoot. On August 1st, 1980, Kevin married Pam, and they are still married today. Um, they currently live in Hawaii, or I think they lived in Hawaii, but I think they moved back to Texas. Um, and they have four children and 13 grandchildren. And his two sons, Ross and Marshall, great name, are both wrestlers, and also use the surname Von Erich uh, for their wrestling careers. On April 4th, 2009, the Von Erich family was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame by Michael Hayes from the Fabulous Freebirds. I remember them. I remember <laughs> they did this terrible rendition, or Michael Hayes did it anyway. It could have been all, fa all the Fabulous Freebirds, but they did this rendition of the boys are back in town and he was just like crawling all over this piano. It was really weird, but anyway, <laughs> I remember that. But Kevin represented the family at the induction. Um, Kevin is the last surviving son of Fritz and Doris. Although tragedy hit his family so many times, he doesn't acknowledge the Von Erich curse, which has been talked about in wrestling lore. Um, he says today he feels like a very lucky man. He has a, a beautiful family and, jo and enjoys his life. And I think that's great because they, this family goes through a lot, a, a, a whole lot. In 2023, the film, The Iron Claw, was released. It was a biopic about the Von Erichs and Zac Efron portrayed Kevin. And Kevin has praised Zac's performance. He says the film is almost completely accurate, except that his father never wanted him to get into wrestling. And there were a few other things that were either done differently or happened way different than they were told. But I'm not gonna get into that because I don't wanna spoil the movie. And I didn't see the whole movie anyway. It's just going by my research that some of the stuff wasn't really accurate. David was the third son of Fritz von Erich. In wrestling, he was known as the Yellow Rose of Texas. He was born on July 22nd, 1958 in Dallas, Texas. Uh, David enjoyed hunting and fishing with his brothers and father, and they would hunt on the Von Erich ranch, and sometimes family and friends would join. David loved raising horses and made a business out of it. He went to college at North Texas State University, but dropped out to work on his wrestling career, which he began in June 1977. Uh, David wrestled for World Class Championship Wrestling, WCCW, and he also wrestled in Missouri and Florida territories. Uh, David was married to Candy McLeod on June 26, 1978, and they had a daughter on October 19, 1978, named Natasha Zoe Anna. Unfortunately, the baby died of SIDS at 13 weeks old, and David and Candy divorced on July 12, 1979. And he remarried um, Patricia Matter on June 8, 1982. David passed away on February 10th, 1984 in Tokyo, Japan. His death report states he died of acute enteritis. And um, uh, that's what is the official story. He died of acute enteritis and that's what the people closest to him believe. And that's the story we're sticking with. But it was told by other wrestlers that it was a, a 
OD. Um, and Ric Flair stated in his autobiography to be the man that everyone in wrestling believed that it was an OD that really killed him. And Bruiser Brody, who was another wrestler, found David and disposed of the narcotics before the police arrived. But again, um, not everybody believes that story. Those closest to David believe it was the enteritis that killed him. And that's the official reason. Not calling Ric Flair a liar. I mean, he was just relaying what other people thought, you know, what other people were thinking. So, yeah. Okay, Carrie is Fritz's fourth son. He was born on February 3rd, 1960 in Niagara Falls, New York. He was nicknamed the Modern Day Warrior and the Texas Tornado. I remember the Texas Tornado, but I don't remember the Modern Day Warrior. Um, and he spent most of his career wrestling for World Class Championship Wrestling, where he spent 11 years. In high school, he did track and field and had a record-breaking record breaking discus throw, which he carried into his wrestling career as his finishing move was called a spinning discus punch. He even trained to be in the 1980 Summer Olympics, but was unable to compete due to the boycott imposed by President Jimmy Carter. Um, his wrestling debut was on March 7th, 1978. And um, he was uh, considered probably the most well-known of the Von Erich brothers of, you know, that group of brothers, uh, that generation. But I distinctly remember Kevin Von Erich too. So I think they were equally known, but. Uh, Carrie was in a very serious motorcycle accident on June 4th, 1986, where he suffered a dislocated hip and a severely injured right leg. Doctors were unable to save his right foot. According to his brother, Kevin, Carrie re-injured the foot following surgery by trying to walk on it before he was ready, which led to the foot requiring amputation. After the amputation, he continued to wrestle with a prosthetic, keeping the amputation a secret. Very few people knew about it. Um... It was after the amputation of his foot, Carrie became addicted to painkillers, which led to uh, several drug-related problems, which included two arrests. Uh, the first arrest resulted in probation, and the second arrest was a violation of his probation, so would likely have ended up ended him up in jail. He likely would have ended up in jail for some time. Um, let me get back to that. I want to share this part with you first. Uh, Carrie was married to Catherine Murray on June 18th, 1983, and they had two daughters, Holly on September 19th, 1984, and Lacey on July 17th, 1986. And Lacey wrestled with TNA um, as Lacey Von Erich, and Carrie and Catherine divorced on April 22nd, 1992. So back to these arrests. One day after being indicted for the second charge, Carrie unalived himself with a single gunshot wound to the heart, or gunshot to the heart, with his father's 44 caliber pistol on February 18th, 1993, on his father's Denton County, Texas ranch. His father has said his last words were, Dad, I love you, hugged him, and went into the woods, and that's where he unalived himself. Bret Hart stated in his autobiography, My Real Life in the Cartoon World of Wrestling, on October 29th, 1990, Carrie told him that he decided to join his brothers in heaven and was waiting for God to tell him when. And Bret told him his daughters needed him more than his late brothers. Bret said Carrie convinced him that he changed his mind, but Bret feared he really didn't. In the summer of 1992, Carrie again told Bret he was ready to reunite with his deceased brother says so sad and the the scene where he actually reunites with his deceased brothers in the movie like I said I haven't seen the movie but I did see that part in a clip and just the waterworks it's just heartbreaking especially the part where he meets Jack the boy that died when he was six years old it's just Oh my God, it's just, 
I know I have to see this movie, but I'm, I'm going to be a mess for it. Um, so Mike Von Erich, moving on to Mike, um, he was born on March 2nd, 1964 in Dallas, Texas. He was known as the Inspirational Warrior. Several wrestlers who knew Mike, his brother Kevin, Jake Roberts, Chris Adams, Gary Hart, King Kong Bundy, all stated that he never wanted to be a wrestler. He wanted to work for, for world-class championship wrestling as a cameraman. And he also knew how to play guitar and wanted to be a musician. And he made his wrestling debut on November 24th, 1983. And his final match was on April 3rd, 1987. Mike married Shani Garza on February 14th, 1985. And he suffered a wrestling injury during a tour of Israel and underwent so shoulder surgery on August 22nd, 1985. And he became very sick after the surgery with a 107 degree fever. He was diagnosed with toxic shock syndrome, which is a condition caused by bacterial toxins of the Streptococcus pyogens and Staphylococcus aureus variety. <laughs> I can't pronounce that word, I'm sorry. And involves the production of super antigens that result in excessive activation in the immune system. He suffered brain damage as a result of the high fever and he lost a lot of weight. To further cause damage to his health, he suffered head injuries from a car accident. And Kevin said Mike attacked a parked car and a stoplight in frustration of his, his issues, his health issues. And that he suffered from the pressure since the start of his career, he was expected to be the new David Von Erich and succeed on the same level as his brothers. Yeah, that's sad. On April 12, 1987, Mike left a note for his family, then went to Louisville Lake, a reservoir in North Texas on, on the Trinity River in Denton County. He drank alcohol and OD'd on a sedative called Placidil. A few days before this, he was arrested for DUI and he was found four days later. The youngest of the Von Erich brothers, Chris, was born on September 30th, 1969. He was the smallest of the Von Erich family at only 5'5". Five five. He started out doing odd jobs backstage and being a cameraman for World Class Championship Wrestling. He was used in various angles in wrestling in the 80s and became a full-time wrestler in 1990. Chris wasn't really very athletic and had health problems such as asthma that limited him as a wrestler. He suffered from brittle bones due to the, the prednisone he took to treat his asthma and he was frustrated that he couldn't get ahead as a wrestler due to his physical build and health. But there are some guys who wrestle now that are on the smaller side, Rey Mysterio, but he is still very strong and muscular though. I don't think that that was even an option for Chris. After Mike passed away in 1987, Chris became very depressed and struggled with drug issues. Kevin says Chris had lent him a VCR and got a call from him in the middle of the night. I'm a little fuzzy on the details of this, but it's basically the same story. He got a call from him in the middle of the night because he wanted his VCR back. In other stories I heard, he went to his house wanting his VCR back. Um, then he went to Kevin's to get it. The brothers sat on a hill and talked together and Chris revealed to Kevin he wanted to unalive himself due to his depression and his health condition. Kevin begged him not to harm himself. Chris assured him he wouldn't, but after Kevin left, he um, in the head. He was brought to East Texas Medical Center shortly after 10 p.m. where he died just 20 minutes after arriving, just short of his 22nd birthday. Toxicology reports showed that um, that white powder and Valium were in his system. I'm sorry, there are some words we're not allowed to say on YouTube or they'll mistreat us. Uh, the Von Erich family, Fritz, Kevin, David, Carrie, Mike, and Chris were inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame by former frequent Von Erich rival, Michael Hayes in 2009. Other inductees that year were Stone Cold Steve Austin, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, Cowboy Bill Watts, Howard Finkel, Coco Beware, Terry and Dory Funk. I loved Steve Austin. 
when I was watching wrestling back. It, and, and it started when, I, I know I'm getting off track, this will just take a minute. Uh, when I was in the hospital, um, I had just given birth to Marshall and I was very, very sick and I was in the hospital. Um, there was nothing on the TV to watch, so I just left it on wrestling and Steve Austin came out and I was like, yes, that is what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, the, and Kevin Von Erich, he went through so much loss, losing all of his brothers when they were all very young and, and losing his father and his mother. And it was just so sad, you know, he's lost so much, but he's gained a lot too. He's created a beautiful family. And um, there was a video I was watching of him and he is walking in Hawaii and all these ducks were following him. And I was like, I want that life. I want ducks to follow me everywhere. Um, so I know that with bi bi biographical films, some events just can't make it into the story. I know that, but I, I really hate that the movie, The Iron Claw leaves, um, they left Chris out. And I guess I can understand the reason why, like they left Chris out because of um, the other brother had unalived himself with a gun. They didn't want to repeat that with Chris because he, the director thought the audience would find that, un, you know, not believable. But I mean, it doesn't matter if it's believable or not. That's the story. That's what happened. It would be one thing if it was a fictional tale, but it was, it's a true story for the most part. But I get the reasoning, but I really feel his story, however brief, deserves to be told. Um, director, um, that Sean Durkin said to Vulture that the film was already sad enough and he just couldn't withstand another brother's death. But I mean, I just, I just wish they honored Chris a little bit by putting him in it. Not that I think it's dishonoring him by leaving him out, but I mean, kind of, right? I don't know. Kevin wasn't mad. He, Kevin told the Guardians, he under, the Guardian, he understands why Chris was cut from the movie. Um, with my story, in, in quotations, with my story, there was so much death that it was just too much. But he hopes that people take away not just the tragedy, but the remarkable, str remarkable strength it took for him to go on, stating, I'm a man that had every reason to quit, but didn't. So let that be a lesson to you. Don't quit. Don't give up. Um, so it's clear, to me anyway, that so mental health issues, mental health illnesses, they can be hereditary. And clearly something was going on in this family. Um, and I know there was a lot of pain and suffering. And um, I don't think it's just the wrestling industry. I think just um, there was obviously, you know, some mental health issues that had to be dealt with. And this was in the era, I'm not saying that this was his fam the, the the that family, the Atkinson family. I'm not saying this was them. But that was a period of time where men were men and didn't cry and didn't talk about being sad and stuff. And you just sucked it up and you were a man. And um, I think so much emphasis was put on being a big, strong man that uh, there was no, no talk of, you know, you know, mental health issues. Like, hey, I'm depressed. Hey, I'm feeling this. I'm feeling that. You know, there was no couch time. And... Um, it just, and I, I remember my mom would, I, I remember talking to my mom when I was very young, telling her my feelings and like, maybe I need to talk to a doctor. She could, and she would, they're quacks. That's a waste of time. You, you're just born the way you are and you just have to deal with it. So it wasn't just men, young men that were treated that way. So, but glad I ignored that advice in my adulthood. But anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you, um, enjoyed hearing about the Von Erich family. I sure did enjoy um, researching them. And I, I'm sorry, my nose is just, I did leave out information about, again, their accolades and their um, championships and stuff in wrestling, because this wasn't so much uh, about wrestling as it was about family. And um, I just wanted to share that with you because I, I first personally find that family fascinating. Um, and especially Kevin with all the, the suffering he's had to endure with so much loss and how he just keeps on keeping on. And he's, uh, you know, got a beautiful life with the, you know, a beautiful wife and all his kids and grandkids and, you know, 
So yeah, that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this again. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to everyone later. Bye. Thank you.